19 plus a negative 5 is equal to a positive 14. The rule is to subtract the absolute values of the two numbers. The absolute values are 19 and 5. Subtract their absolute value and get 14 and give your number, your answer, the sign of the number with the higher absolute value, which is the 19, and the sign of the 19 is positive. Of course, you don't need to write that. When you subtract two numbers, sign numbers, you're expected to add the opposite. Uh, you add the opposite of those, and so what we're left with here then is 9 plus a positive 6, or the answer is 15. Again, remember it was 9. Take away a negative 6. Think about it in terms of money. You have $9 here. And then if you take away a debt of $6, you're better off your $15 in total. Um, C means to take a negative 1 times a negative 1 times a negative 1, you know, dot, 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 um, 8 times. And when you multiply a negative number together, an even number of times you get a positive answer. So the answer to this one is a positive 1. On the other hand, a negative 7 part d to the second power does not mean, I'm going to erase this in a minute, and it does not mean take a negative 7 and square it and get a positive 49. Instead, what it means is um, think of this negative sign right here is my asking for the opposite of whatever 7 squared is. Well, 7 squared is 49. And the opposite of 49 is a negative 49. So be careful. D, its answer is a negative 49. If I was looking for an answer of a positive 49, I would have to put that negative 7 in parentheses. Then that would mean a negative 7 times a negative 7, which is a positive 49. So be careful with D. When you multiply two fractions together, what I tend to do in part E is is I will look at the signs first. So I have a negative times a positive, and I know that's going to be a negative answer. So I'll take care of that first. Then you can either multiply straight across and get 6 in the numerator over whatever 14 times 5 is in the denominator. That's a lot of work because then you haven't reduced it um, efficiently. Instead, I'd like to say that 3 goes into the number 3 once and goes into the number 15 five times. And likewise, 2 goes into 2 once and into 14 7 times. And what I have now is I have to multiply these together. So in the numerator, 1 times 1 is 1. In the denominator, 7 times 5 is 35. The answer to this problem is a negative 35. Order of operations um, says to do parentheses first then to work anything involving exponents, then to multiply, and I'm going to abbreviate this, and divide, working left to right, and then finally to add and subtract, working left to right as well. So in letter F here, I need to work from left to right because I'm at the adding and subtracting stage. Now, mind you, if you wish to go swipe, swipe with this 17, the negative 17, if you wish to do this, you, you're welcome to do that. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that away if I can. And I'm just going to work left to right. And I'm going to take the 40 minus 17 first and get a positive 23. And then I would have to add 4 next and then take away the 10. I'm being awfully careful to work from left to right. And 23 plus 4 is 27. And then finally, when I take away 10, I get a final solution of 17. In G here, I should write down or, and state for myself what the absolute value of a negative 17 is. And that is just a positive 17. And get rid of the absolute value bracket. Then I'll put the plus sign that was right here down. And I'm being asked to take a negative 14 and add a positive 17 to that. The difference in their absolute values is 3. 
and the 17 has more pull, so the answer to that problem is a positive 3. When I'm adding and subtracting mixed fractions, I tend to turn these into improper fractions. I find it to be easier, so there's no borrowing and carrying. So the 7 and 2 fifths, I'm going to call uh, 7 times 5 is 35, and then if I add the 2 to that, I get 37 fifths. That's the improper fraction for 7 and 2 fifths. Likewise, I'm going to take this 2 times this 3 and get 6. And then I'm going to add 1 to that and get 7 halves. And now I'm going to go ahead and add those two fractions that have a common denominator of 10. So to make the 37 fifths have that denominator, I'm going to multiply that fraction by the number 1 using 2 over 2. And so let's see, that's 74, 37 times 2 is 74 over 10. Likewise, the 7 halves, I have to multiply it by 5 over 5 so that it will have a denominator of 10. That fraction will be called 35 over 10. And I'm now ready to add those two fraction cause, fractions because they have a common denominator. They add up to be 109 over 10, and 10 goes into 100 10 times, into 109 it goes in there 10 times, but I have 9 left over and I can write that back as a mixed fraction. Let's do the next one the same way. So the 5 times the 7 right here is 35, add 3 to it and you get 38 sevenths. Right here the 2 times the 5 is 10, Add 2 to that, and you get 12 fifths. So my common denominator is 35. And so the first fraction is going to have to be multiplied by 5. And the second fraction is going to have to be multiplied by 7. In the first fraction, when I multiply 38 times 5, I'm doing this in my head, so I think that's 190 over 35 and then the 12 times 7 is 84 over 35 and when you subtract these um, we're going to get 106 over 35. Oh I would imagine that goes into 35 goes into a 106 three times because 3 times 35 is 105 and I have one left over so I have 1 35th left over. Good enough. Boy, those were some hard problems with those fractions.